Talo Falava. My name's Leah Tawa, Dr. John Peterson, and I'm with TE2 Edge Sports Cards. Hey, happy 4th of July. Oh my goodness. Nice day. Holiday. Uh, it's a great, great holiday, uh, marking the independence of the of the 13 colonies, what is to become the United States of America. Um, yeah, super exciting. Uh, went back to Wisconsin and spent some time with my dad and my brother and sister's families. And I uh, had a blessed time. It was great. It was nice. We hadn't been together like that over the 4th for oh, 20 years, 20 years or more. So that was a lot of fun. Um, made it back safe and sound and uh, thought I'd hop on uh, YouTube here and do a quick video. Um, overall, things seem to be doing pretty well. I uh, have been selling some cards, packaging some cards, sending stuff out in the mail. Uh, put out like four different packages yesterday. Um knowing that they won't get sent out uh, until tomorrow, uh, first class. <clears throat> Sold them on uh, eBay through auction. Uh, made in about 10 different sales on auction on some vintage stuff. and Overall, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about the stuff that I've been selling. Um, also put together a rather large PSA order. I think there were actually, I don't know, four different orders. Uh, did a sub group sub through... Um, Three Star Sports Cards, which you've heard me talk about in Bloomington, Minnesota. Great card shop. Great to work with Wayne and Eric and the team there, Michelle. Um, some really nice 59s. Uh, Mantle, Gibson, um, Louis Mays, Hank Aaron, Clemente, Ernie Banks. You know, the five, six big stars. Uh, some other other minor stars in there, too. Ed Matthews. Well, I wouldn't say Ed Ma Eddie Matthews is a minor star. He was quite a player. Hit over 500 home runs, so... But overall, um, the big guns were in there. The mantle, I'm thinking a five or a six. I'd love to get a six on it. And the Gibson, I think, is a six, maybe a seven. If I got a seven on a PSA slab, I'd be absolutely thrilled. So, But yeah, that's going to be a few months on those. The, the mantle and the Gibson I sent, I think, at the $175 level. Um, just because I think both those cards could potentially come in over $1,000. So... So hopefully that'll increase the turnaround time from three to four months or four to six months or whatever it is that PSA is doing on value. The other stuff I did value. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, let's see. I also put together about 100 cards in a CSG order this morning, and I got that all boxed up. I wanted to maximize um, the, the um, price at uh, $10 a slab uh, being a, a prime um, member. Not a prime member, but a... Elite member, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, so it was about 100 cards. I think it was about 1000 bucks. So we'll get a whole bunch of those back. So, I mean, I've got one, two, three different groups of PSA orders coming back um, or are currently being submitted and then we'll be coming back. And then two rather large CSG uh, orders, one that has 90-some cards in it that is scheduled for grading right now and the stuff that I'll be sending out tomorrow. So... You got to grade, 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 man. I'm telling you, you got to keep grading. Um, you know, you got to have a, a plan. And I would really encourage you to think about, like, how you decide and what your process is for determining which grading company you go with. I don't use a, a single methodology. You know, I would use SGC. If I was doing pre-war stuff, I would do only SGC. Uh, I think their slabs look the best for those smaller cards, and uh, I think they probably are the most knowledgeable, maybe PSA, of all the professional grading services for those pre-war cards. Anything post-war, vintage, 50s, 60s, I do PSA. If it's something that is really high-end that I want to either PC or potentially move, especially if it's something I want to move. And then uh, CSG for the middle to lower tier stuff, but even the high-end stuff too. Um, especially if I want to PC it. Uh, CSG for me is a long-term play. Uh, PSA, also a long-term play, but has shorter-term ramifications because it seems that people want to get in those, get in on those slabs a little bit quicker than the CSG slabs, which makes sense. PSA is always going to have that registry. Uh, CSG will never have a registry like PSAs, and that's okay. Um, I like CSG because the slab is elite. It's an e elite slab. The acrylic is elite. Uh, the the flip is fine. It's not offensive in any way. Um, 
I think they have the best slabs in the industry, in the hobby, hands down. And so, crystal clear, uh, solid, um, but they're also not the coin of the realm. The coin of the realm is PSA. So, yeah, pick your, pick your, pick your poison or pick your, <laughs> pick your medicine, whatever you want to call it. it doesn't really matter. Um, you got to have something though. So grade, get out and grade your cards. Um, keep moving in your business. Don't get stagnant. All right, that's one thing I want to share with people. You know, I've I've had a business since 2012, and I've been through highs and lows. Um, first few years, lost money. Um, wasn't until year two, year three, year four that I started making a profit. Um, you know, and didn't get into the card business part of it until just this last year. So, you know, that's a, a number of years of working on the business and building it up. And, you know, now it's at the point that, you know, I can take some calculable risks. Um, I've taken some losses on some things, but, you know, I just recently, every month, I go through and I tabulate and account for inventory costs. So I have a running total every month of what I'm spending on inventory. I also do a running total for fee-related professional services. So the post office, grading services, um, any inventory or any, any supplies that I need to house the inventory are all deductible expenses. So I've got a, an accounting um, of that. I use Hurdler. For my business i don't use quickbooks for those of you that are familiar with hurdler it's a great little tool fairly intuitive low cost 150 bucks a year annual uh, at the most um and i've used it for the last three four years and it's been terrific for me for my business i'm a small business though there's only me and then other folks that i subcontract out with occasionally so i don't have any employees so it's not like uh, i need a, a quickbooks like uh, accounting system platform <clears throat> Um, but Hurdler's great, so I have all the the fees and everything that's deductible in that in that um, in that software program. But the um, the inventory costs I keep hard copy, and then I put it into a spreadsheet. But then I also have it written down. So every month, usually middle end of the month, I go through and I tabulate how much I've spent, and then I total it up, and then I take a look and see how much I've brought in, and then I total that up. So then the difference between what I've spent and what I've made is the capital gains loss on the inventory. So my understanding, and again, I'm not an accountant, is that there are opportunities to potentially um, market a capital gains loss on your taxes um, and reduce your tax burden. And you check with your accountant. accountant. you got to have a good accountant if you're running a business. Um, this is for all those that are doing business through cards, cards through business. If you're just collecting and, and doing it for the fun of it, hey, don't worry about it. You're good. Um, but my understanding is that you don't pay taxes, capital gains taxes, on the inventory until you start making a profit on it. You also got to keep track of sales tax. Um, I use ST3, so I don't pay sales tax. And uh, typically, when I've sold my cars, I've sold them to people who um, either... Uh, get their sales tax done through eBay or I have to hold back that sales tax so I keep track of all of the sales I make on inventory that aren't uh, that are the sales tax isn't attributed to and then I have to multiply that by the end of the year times the Hennepin County sales tax rate which is like 0 0.07252 or something like that uh, whatever it is at the time and then I have to deduct that and hold that back and pay those taxes as sales taxes when I pay my state taxes. So that being said, you got to keep track of a lot of stuff, but um, you definitely want to you definitely want to do a monthly, maybe even a weekly. I prefer a monthly. How much you're spending, how much you're bringing in. eBay is easy because it keep it keeps a running total. Um, my slabs, there's a record of it in my slabs. Um, but I always print off paper copies. I don't mess around with that stuff. I always want to have paper. The IRS can come and audit your business over any seven-year period. So they could come to you today and they could say, I want to see all the receipts and everything from seven years back. So you got to make sure you keep your records tight. Uh, I do digital and paper. Um, I always want to have a paper backup. And uh, if it's not in paper, it didn't exist. That's my saying. So take that for what it's worth. Um, <clears throat> other pieces, uh, keep things moving. I said that. Keep the money flowing. 
You don't have to give stuff away. That's not what I'm advocating for. You put a lot of time and effort. I put a lot of time and effort into prepping my cards, finding them, purchasing them, procuring them on my slabs, um, getting them graded, uh, you know, all that. Pricing them in some cases if I'm doing a show, which I'll be doing one in, August, or one in September, one in August, excuse me. So, I mean, there's just a lot that goes into it, but... You know, you put a lot of time into your card business. If you're like me, you put a lot of time into it. You definitely want to, um, you know, do it the right way and, and get your money uh, back from it or, or then some, hopefully then some, at least enough to keep going. Um, so I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to selling cards that some people would not sell. I'll give you an example. I've got an eBay auction going right now. Um, you can see here my uh, eBay is RJP2532. All my listings have TE2. So if you go to the search bar here and you put in TE2, you see all my listings. There's 27. And 27 of them are auction. So they're all auction. So as an example, I got a 58 tops Hank Aaron here. Eh, not in great shape. I bet it's a three. Probably a three. PSA 3. Could I get more for it if I had it created? Sure. Definitely could. But would I have a harder time finding a buyer? Yeah, probably. Probably would. So some stuff's got to be sold raw because that's what some people are looking for raw. Some people don't like the high-end, super high-graded, in a slab type stuff. You know, a lot of people just want some want some copies of cards raw. So I went uh, auction this and it's done in about an hour. It's at 62, 26 bids. Here's a 58 Koufax. Uh, same deal, raw. Nine bids, 48 bucks. You know, some other stuff here. Um, here's a 55 tops, second year Hank Aaron card. You might think to yourself, well, geez, Dr. Peterson, why are you selling this card? Don't you want to keep this card? No, actually I don't. Um, if, I, if I want this card, if I want to have this card, I'm gonna get it in a six or higher and uh, I'm going to pay for it, you know, however I get it, whether it's through a, a third-party sale, private party, or through my slabs or eBay. But, um, yeah, that's just not me. I'm at the point where I want a little higher grade. So I take a look at it. You get, But somebody's going to want this card. So why should I keep this card just for the sake of keeping it? I might as well sell it, right? Might as well sell it. Here's another Aaron, 56 tops. Third year card. Great card. Absolutely great card. But do I plan to keep this card? No, I don't. Do I want a copy of this card? Yeah, I want a copy of this card for sure. I want to try and find it in a seven or higher. If I can get this in an eight, I'll be all over it. So my thinking is sell the raw vintage card, save the money, and apply it to getting a seven or higher in this card later on down the road. In fact, I used to have a seven of this actually. Bought it back in 2000 when eBay was just kind of getting started. There's a 56 Clemente. So this is a 10-day bid. We've already had 24 bids on this. That's great, right? So great card. Love Clemente. Clemente is my favorite all-time player. But I want this card in a higher condition, a better condition. So I'm going to sell it. Sell the vintage. Sell it raw. Here's a 55 Matthews. That's up to 96 bucks. That's really good. Now, 58 Mantle, uh, 64 Mantle, um, World Series Batting Foes, Yogi Berra. Yeah, so I mean, like, my thing is this. Here's the deal. If you're going to spend this much time doing cards, one, it's got to be fun. If it's not fun, then you shouldn't be doing it. Two, if you're going to do it as a business, do it truly as a business. Put the time, the thought, and the effort. You, you're going to you're going to make mistakes, hands down. Anytime you run a business, you're going to make mistakes. That goes without saying. The key thing is that you learn from your mistakes. You've got to learn from the things that you do wrong. The people who make the same mistakes over and over and over and over are the ones who don't do well with their business. Um, and business is more than just you know, doing the same thing over and over again. You've got to change things up. So at some point, i got to start doing some shows. I know that. 
at some point I got to start doing some B-roll footage at shows. Um, that's what the competitors on YouTube, the other content creators are doing. So, you know, that's, that's a, that's a growth area for me. Um, I'm, I'm pretty locked down on my slabs. I got pretty, pretty locked down on eBay. Um, I've got the junk wax chronicle pieces. Sometimes I go out and find wax out in the wild. So, I mean, I got some of the pieces that I'm doing, but you have to diversify your business. You have to diversify your communication and your marketing, and you have to get in community with people, right? Now, community doesn't mean you have to be with people in person. Community can be virtual, right? Or it can be a hybrid. It can be both. So, but the big thing is do do what feels good to you, do what feels right to you, and do it because you love it and you're having fun doing it. Um, the third piece that I would say is if you don't want the card and it doesn't bring you joy, then sell it. Why keep it? It doesn't make any sense to keep something if it doesn't bring you joy. Obviously, you're not going to throw it away. And you're not going to give it away, you know, but trade it. Uh, trade it or sell it to somebody who will really want it and really enjoys it. Um, you know, there's no reason for me to keep, for example, this Dick Butkus 1969 Kellogg's 3D card if there's somebody who really wants it. Now, there's two bids on it. Current bid's at 561 So, I mean, I might, this might end up being about 10 bucks, Right, so I might make like 4 or 5 bucks on this. But if this goes to a Bears fan who loves Dick Buckus, man, that's great. I think that's fantastic. Um, I I like Dick Buckus, but I'm not a huge Bears fan. I'm a Packer fan. Right, if it was Nitschke, it might be different. Might keep it. Right, and no, not every card needs to get graded. You don't gotta you don't gotta grade every card. So, not everything you buy has to be raw. You know, sometimes you can go with stuff that is, um, you know, just, you know, whatever it is that you like. So, I don't know, I'm kind of babbling on here, I'm going to stop, but my point is this. If you're going to do this, do it the right way. Put the time in. Um, you know, do it because you love it, and put the time in, and do it the right way, and you'll be you'll be good to go. Um you know, you're going to take some risks. You got to take some risks. You know, no risk it, no biscuit. Um, but you have to be careful and knowledgeable about how you take your risks. And, um, you know, enjoy what it is you do. That's the most important thing. I like to rip wax. I, like, I love ripping jump wa junk wax. So a lot of my videos are ripping junk wax. Uh, I love to sell things on eBay via auction. So I sell stuff via eBay on auction. Um... I like to have stuff curated on my slabs, so I curate stuff on my slabs. Um, so, oh, let's see, look at this. Great eBay buyer. Thank you from Burbank Sports Cards, world's largest card shop. Picked up a recent card there. It'll be a surprise for the next month. All right, that's all I got. Peace out. One love. Hope you have a blessed holidays and stay safe out there. And uh, be careful with the fireworks. All right, peace.